Ladies and gentlemen, kings and queens, welcome back to another day in the studio. As you can see from the title of this video, we have something very important to talk about today. So without wasting any time, let's just go ahead and get right into it. Welcome everyone, we are back in the Window Shop Review. My name is Cryptic, and if you're new here, I call it Window Shop Review because we're shopping through windows, quote unquote, and we are looking at all these products, making our opinions based off of the face value that we're getting from the information on the product websites. So these aren't really hands-on reviews, but we're just kind of getting an idea, and I'm just treating it as if I was you. We were average consumers. We're going through, we're looking at these products, and we want to know exactly what we're getting into. So we're going to form those opinions together and before we get into today's video I just want to remind you guys to subscribe and join the kingdom down below because we have a great community here I love interacting with you all and we're just gonna keep growing and growing until maybe one day we can hit 10,000 subs so without further ado let's go ahead and talk about it now if you want to take a look over here we actually had a very, very sneaky announcement from Razer. Now, with all this hype of all the NVIDIA tech coming out right now with their new line of graphics cards, this was the perfect, perfect business move that Razer could have made to announce this new gaming mouse because everybody's gonna be wanting to tweak up their builds. Everybody's gonna wanna upgrade. While they're at it, they might as well upgrade their mouse. And Razer actually came out with a new mouse that is an upgraded version of their Razer Naga series. This is the Razer Naga Pro. Now this is completely wireless and it has swappable face plates on the left hand side. So you have both a number pad you have three buttons on one side and then you can also have just the two and these are for different types of game models of course they actually have it down here where they have the games that they would recommend them with and then especially if you're somebody like me who is more right-handed oriented or at least the hand that you were using when you're using a controller is uh, more dominant on one side than the other one because you just have more buttons that you had to finagle on one side. So the keyboard gets kind of clunky for me until I get a little bit more comfortable with it. And this is a good replacement to kind of help me along the way into using mouse and keyboard. This comes with starting off with the price, of course. Let's get all the way back up to the top here. $149.99, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but $149.99, completely wireless. It has Razer Hyperspeed, which is a performance mode. You basically have two different performance modes. One where it's going off of just Bluetooth, and then one where you have the Hyperspeed wireless. And basically this is Razer's form of uh, software where it makes the connection between your mouse and your computer actually a lot faster than your standard Bluetooth link. And this uses a little bit more battery life, but not as much as you would actually think. So that kind of helps with that whole controversy of using a wireless versus a wired mouse and the and, uh, pretty much the unavoidable latency that you get whenever you have a wireless connection, you have things that can interfere with that. And even with this being as bold of a claim as it is, the 25% faster than any wireless technology available, take it with a grain of salt because this is still a very new product. And when I say new, as you saw on that tweet, like September 3rd, 2020 new. So we have to actually kind of test this out, see how it works in environments with a lot of electronics around. Like I have my router, I have my Xbox, I have two computers, I have a bunch of things going on in here that could interfere. I have my cell phone that could interfere with that wireless signal. So remember that going into buying any type of wireless device, but let's continue on. So 19 plus one programmable buttons. You have all these different customiz customizations that you can make. And then you also have their laser focus optical sensor. So basically what they're saying is that this is a laser oriented system for all of your trigger clicks. So what's gonna happen is instead of using um, some sort of mechanical feature like a spring, you're gonna have just a laser that is going to go through and it's gonna connect and connect and connect. And that's going to trigger the actual action of clicking the button instead of relying on mechanical means on a pressure sensor. So that will eliminate eliminate some of that double clicking that you get with mice whenever you use them for long periods of time they start getting worn out in those little bits but at least with this you do have something that has a little bit more longevity while using the laser oriented system and now here's the other thing with that as well 0 0.2 milliseconds of latency 0 0.2 that's 
crazy. I have to absolutely, absolutely have to see this to test it out because that makes no sense <laughs> that you can have that quick of a reaction from the button click to sending over to your PC that it's registering that quickly. And then of course you have a two, up to 2,000, uh, 20,000 actually, up to 20,000 DPI, which I don't know who's using their mouse at that fast of a cursor speed, like going from side to side, but you have the option. I sit here at a nice, comfortable 1800 DPI, but you have 20,000 if you need it. And now we have the actual, uh, some of the stats here. You have 150 hours of battery life. And then with the Bluetooth, you have the 150 hours. This is what I was talking about, the different connection speeds. So if you have the hyperspeed wireless, where it's drawing a little bit more of that power, you're gonna have 100 hours of game time with that. So all of these look absolutely wonderful when it comes to this mouse. It has a great design to it. It also has a little pinky. I wonder if I can find a image of that. Yeah, it has the pinky armrest right here, where if you are kind of like me and you have more of a relaxed grip and you don't play kind of clawed on your mouse, this really helps out with keeping your pinky from just dragging all over the mouse and then adding even more weight to whenever you're trying to use your arm as a whole motion when you're playing games. So that little rest itself is something that I look for in my mice. But Moving on from that, we have its main competitor, and that is the Logitech G502 Lightspeed, which is also $149.99. Now, this has been the king of wireless mice for quite some time now. I've actually been looking into getting one of these for myself. I was saving up to get one eventually in the future. I was gonna upgrade my keyboard first since I was kind of gifted this Razer uh, Death Adder mouse, but this bad boy, has probably been at the very top of the hill for so long and it's well known it has a great design to it it's all about lightweight design too that's what i really like about logitech is that they are very keyed in on making sure that this is designed specifically for gaming and that you're going to get as much out of it as you can now it's great to have all those mappable buttons, but this one only has about 11. A, they, as I was saying before, they're emphasizing the endoskeleton that they have here to make it a lighter weight design. And then you also have weights that you could put in here. I, I don't really understand why they would put more weights in there. I guess it's just to kind of help you adjust exactly how you want to move your mouse around. But as far as my understanding is concerned, when it comes to high competitive play, like I said, I've seen them gut the mess out of mice. They've just completely taken buttons out. They've made it as light as possible, put different types of uh, feet on the mice to make it move a lot easier. And having the weights to kind of offset the balance as to how you want to move your mouse, it's a nice option, but I don't see that being used as much in a very highly competitive environment. Now. That's the thing with the Razer uh, Naga Pro is that they didn't really emphasize or talk about the actual specs of the build of the mouse. They didn't say how much it weighed. They didn't say um, how it's built on the inside besides the actual triggers themselves. But I believe that it would probably be all right, especially since it is, once again, a wireless mouse. You want the wire first and foremost out of the way. That's what you want. That's why you're getting a wireless mouse. So you move on from there. Of course, everything else is about the same. Uh, you have a 60 hour battery life with this mouse. So that was another turn off. If you go for those long, long sessions and you forget to kind of plug it in and you come back and you go to use it again, you're gonna have to switch over to the wire after about 60 hours of gameplay. Or they had a option up here and it's some sort of charging mat, I believe. It's actually down here. Let me just scroll down and show you guys what I was looking at earlier. So they have some sort of ch uh, wireless charging mat, so that way that your mouse is always charged. But that, let me just check on the price of that real quick. If you were to do that, is that, I don't know if this is an actual bundle deal, but if this mat by itself is $119, that's a bit excessive. I believe that this would probably be an add-on because the mouse by itself is 149, so that's definitely not a bundle deal. But here's the thing with the Razer Naga Pro here. They have a bundle deal, boom, right here, where you can get the mouse and the charging dock for $169.99 for a limited time probably. So if you guys wanna get this, hop on it right now. You have to use this code Naga Dock at checkout, but you will get the dock and the mouse for $169.99. That is unbeatable, that is really good. So, and it sits really well on there too. Like, look at this. 
I would love to come into my office and I saw it just resting there and I took it off the mount, stuck it down and started using it. I'm a, I'm a bit of a softy when it comes to little mechanics like that, like the actual functionality of how my tech works and how I access my tech. I really like when they think about things like this and they make sure it's presentable and they make sure that it's a good feel when you go to start using your tech. Um, that's just something that the tactile features have always drawn me to certain types of uh, products. Now, going back to this here, we can actually see all of the specs here that we have for the uh, mouse for the Logitech uh, G502. So you can actually get the weight, which is about 75, wait, <laughs> that's width. <laughs> the weight's about 114 grams. And then you have the extra weights so that you can add up to another extra 16 grams on it. Um, you actually have, with the lighting, um, it's 48 hours of battery life. Without the lighting, it's 60 hours of battery life. And then if you move on from there, you have, do 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 do. The resolution is 100 to 16,000 DPI. And then you actually have your, doo -doo 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 your wireless rate. So a thousand Hertz, one millisecond. So still pretty fast. Will you notice the difference between one millisecond of latency versus 0 0.2 milliseconds of latency? I will leave that up to you guys. But if it were up to me and I was paying the same price for both of these mice, I would go for the 0.2, obviously. So where does that leave us between these two mice? And honestly, guys, I think the Razer Naga Pro probably wins this competition right now because one, it's the exact same price as the Logitech G502 uh, Lightning Speed. It is literally the exact same price. They're both $149.99. You get a much better deal with it because you get not only the three swappable plates so you can go between multiple different games and have different settings on one mouse. You also have better statistics when it comes to the Razer Naga Pro over the Logitech G502. It has a better DPI setting right now. It has a better uh, mechanism for registering its clicks while using the laser uh, activated switches. And then you also have a longer battery life in which you can get a bundle deal and get a charging dock for it for 169. So only 20 bucks more versus having the standard Logitech uh, G502 mouse and then maybe getting that mouse pad for it. But it already has a much shorter battery life at 60 hours best versus 150 best on the Razer Naga Pro. So you have a couple of different options there. The Razer Naga Pro is still early. It's not really as tested as all the other ones, but it is an upgrade to a previous model. So I'm feeling that it's safe to say that you can go ahead and trust in the design of this model as long as the previous generation didn't have any issues. But uh, my main downfall for this mouse is that it uses Razer Synapse. And if you saw my last video on setting up your stream with Razer Pro, products, the whole Razer setup, I do not like Razer Synapse Pro. It's not a very good software. So we're going to leave it at that. We'll see what we get whenever people get it into their hands and we'll maybe get this in my hands and we'll come back and we'll do another review on it. But I want you guys to let me know down below what you think about these mice. Do you think you're going to go for either the Razer Naga Pro or the G502? Are you loyal to Logitech for their tried and true system? Or are you going to take a risk on the Razer Naga Pro and see what it's all about? Because it's new, it's fresh and Nvidia hype has just got you going for PC wear and you want to look for upgrades for all your different parts of your system. So let's talk about it in the comments. My name is Cryptic. I appreciate you guys spending the day with me that you did and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.